again, I'm glad to have you back, and I'd like to do for you today an example on how to calculate the area moment of inertia of a T-shaped beam. Now, a long, long time ago when I was in undergraduate schools and, and I guess the dinosaurs were crawling out of the oceans, I remember struggling with this a little bit, so I'm very happy to do what I can to help you. All right, so what I've got here is a T-shaped beam. It's made out of two boxes here, and I've numbered them box one and box two. The uh, width of the the top section of the beam, of the cap, I guess if you want to call it that, is 400 millimeters. It's 40 millimeters thick, and the, the, the web or the stem here is 150 millimeters high and also 40 millimeters wide. Now, I'm doing everything in metric units. If you're more uh, comfortable with English units, uh, 100 millimeters is about 4 inches and 150 millimeters is about 6 inches. Okay? So to, do, to find the area moment of inertia, there's two steps. The first is we've got to figure out where the centroid is. Once we know where the centroid is, then we can do the area moment of inertia calculation for the entire shape. So let's start by finding the centroid. Right? Centroid is almost always designated by Y bar or, or X bar, whatever, but by that bar up there, the bar signifying an average. And what a centroid is, is it's the center of the area. If this shape were cut out of maybe a sheet of, of steel that was heavy, I could put my finger right under the centroid and that the whole shape would balance. Okay, It's like a balance point. So that's what the, the bar stands for. I'm using Y uh, as my uh, or axis uh, identifier here. And I'm starting at the bottom here. You've got to start this from somewhere. Pick some place convenient. So I'm starting at the bottom. Alrighty, so Here's the definition of how to write out a, a centroid. Okay, so what we've got is in the numerator, we've got the sum of the centroids of the individual boxes. That's y i. I don't have a bar in there because I don't want to get uh, to confuse people. Times the area of each individual box. Okay, so the centroid of the first box is that distance plus one half that width there. So it's going to be 170 millimeters times the area. Well, the area is 100 millimeters times 40 millimeters. It's going to be 4,000 millimeters squared. Plus now the centroid of box number two here, and that's going to be 75 millimeters. It's just half that. Okay. Times the area. Well, the area is 150 times 40. That's going to be 6,000. Another way to do it is say, well, it's half again as big as that one, which is also 6,000. So 6,000 millimeters squared. Okay, and then just add, put 4,000 millimeters squared and 6,000 millimeters squared in the denominator. So that's what the calculation looks like. When you carry that out, you're going to get 113 millimeters or 0 0.113 meters if you prefer. Okay? Now, when you get a number like this, it's time to stop and think. Actually, when you get any number, before you just blindly copy it down, stop and take a look. Stand back a second and sort of give it a sniff. That smell like that could be the right answer? Does it pass the sniff test? So what I'm going to look at here, is that a plausible number? If you look at my, my shape here, I know that the centroid there is 75 millimeters, and the centroid right there is 170. The centroid of the entire shape has got to be between the two of those somewhere, and it seems pretty plausible that it would be maybe shifted a little bit up that direction. So somewhere in there seems like about the right answer, and certainly must be between those two. Well, this number passes both of those tests. It doesn't it doesn't promise you that's the right answer, but it's at least plausible. This, doing this kind of thing will save you from, from making silly mistakes. And we all do it, so anything we can do to avoid it is, is good. So I'm going to write that over. Oops. Get the correct number. Okay. Now that we know where the centroid is, now it's time to find the area and moment of inertia. Now, when you have a shape made up of smaller boxes like this, a large complicated shape made of smaller, simpler shapes, this, the uh, area moment of inertia has two components in it. It's got the area moment of inertia of the individual shapes, plus a correction term or an additional term to account for the fact that the centroid of the shape is not on the centroid of the entire uh, structure, the centroids of these little boxes. Okay? And what that looks like is we'll write I 
equals the summation of I sub I. Now, I sub I means that's the, the centroids of the individual, or the area moments of inertia of the individual shapes. This is the area moment of inertia of the entire shape, okay? Plus AI di squared, where that's the area moment of, or the area of each shape, and that d is the distance of the centroid of my individual boxes from the centroid of the entire uh, piece. Okay, well, I1 is 1 12 bh cubed. I put a 1 and a 1 there. All right, so that's 1 over 12 times the base. Well, that's 100 millimeters times 40 millimeters oops, that cubed, okay? So that this is going to be a pretty big number. We're working in millimeters, and millimeters are very small. So that's what we're going to get here, and this works out to be, all right, make sure I do this right, 533, okay? Big number, big number because millimeters is only about that big, okay? I2 and now is 112. Different number now. We've got 40 millimeters times 150 millimeters cubed. Okay, this is going to be really big because we're cubing a much larger number here. And I'm actually going to go to uh, scientific notation here because I don't want to have to write that many zeros. Okay, so there's that one 1.125 times 10 to the seventh millimeters to the fourth, okay? So we've got that part of the equation uh, nailed down. We've got that part of the equation nailed down. Well, D is just the distance. It's going to be that centroid. Okay, let's even draw this out here. Okay, so there we go. There's, there's the, the symbol usually used for center of gravity on airplanes. I'm an aerospace guy originally, so I guess I'll use that. That seems pretty good. So I've got everything I need here. Let's let's actually write these out. Five three 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 three, and one two five times ten to the seventh. Okay, got all our intermediate results here. Let's bring it on home. Okay, this is going to be. Five three 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 big number fourth times let's see four thousand millimeters squared times one one three minus uh, let's see one uh, seventy and that's squared now an interesting part about what's in the parentheses right there doesn't matter whether I write it in this this way or reverse the two numbers. It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. And the reason is that we're going to square it. It's going to be positive when we're done anyway. This is the only time ever in your life you're going to be able to not care about signs. This is the one place. Okay, so there's box one. Box two, 1.125 times 10 to the seventh. Uh, let's see, oh, that's a plus sign by the way. Sorry about that. You've probably caught this, but that's a plus sign plus 6,000 millimeters squared times 113 millimeters minus, okay, now I'm going to subtract 75 from that one. That's actually going to be a positive number now. Oops. Okay, so there we go. Those are my two terms, and the final answer is is a really big number, 3.3443 times 10 to the 7th millimeters to the 4th. And if you prefer to uh, convert that to meters to the 4th, the conversion factor is just 10 to the 12th. Divide that by 10 to the 12th, and you're going to get meters to the 4th. So there you go.